Ezer gutxi dakigu Euskal Herriti milaka kilometrora dagoen Tamil Herriaren inguruan. Kultura hau Indiako Tamil Nadu eskualdean sortu zen. Hirurogei milioi lagun bizi dira bertan, baina munduan zehar barreiaturik daude emigrazio ezberdinak direla eta, tartean ez Sri Lankan. Bi milioi inguru bizi dira irlako iparzein ekialdean eta Tamilek populazioaren euneko amabi osatzen dute. Sinala retnia nagusi da Irlan, eta beraien naierara eraikitako Sri Lankako estatuaren sorreratik bertatik, etengabekoa izan da Tamilek, haien eskubideak errespetatuak izateko egindako borroka. Judel Al Fernando sinalarra izan da ere, Tamilen eskubideak defendatzen ditu, eta horrek uartetik alde egin behar izatera eraman du. Egun Dublingo Unibertsitatean igakaslea da. No, I am a Sinhalese. There is a, a, a level of solidarity among the Sinhala progressive groups and the Tamil uh, people is a very, very small minority. Within the Sinhala society, uh, there are few journalists, there are few trade unionists, there are few artists, and a majority of them are out of the country. And a good number of them have been killed. Sri Lankan state was created by the British colonial rule. It was rebuilt very strongly by every Sinhala ruling party since 1948 so-called independence. And that was done by discriminating against the Tamils. It is a centralized state like uh, Franco's national Catholicism. It is the Sinhala Buddhist uh, ideology and it does not uh, allow any kind of autonomy. Sinhala, that is the language of the majority, like the Spanish, okay, language, was declared as the only official language of the whole country. Sinhala colonies were, were built by the Sri Lankan state in the Tamil areas, like the Israeli government does in the Palestinian territory. And this state has been supported from the Sinhala left to the Sinhala right. Uh, it is the Spanish case also, you know. And the Basque people understands this more than anybody else, I would say. <laughs> Tamilen borroka moldeak anitzak izan dira. Astapenetan desobedientzia zibilean oinarritutako mugimendua zena, 2009an munduko ezkutuko erakunde politiko militar eraginkorrenetakoa zen. In the first 30 years, their resistance was non-violent, following the Indian Gandhi's Satyagraha model. In the 70s, a consciousness a collective consciousness arose that the only solution is a separate state. And it was agreed by all the Tamil parties in 1977. And all the Tamil parties contested the elections in the Tamil areas. And they won 90% of seats in the Tamil areas. The separate state was democratically approved. And then what happens was the Sri Lankan government introduced uh, a constitutional uh, mechanism forcing the Tamil politicians to take a, a promise in the parliament that they would not request uh, a separate state. So the only parliamentary democratic uh, door was closed. And then you can see the new generation uh, fought with arms uh, without anybody's help. Then by 2002 they had built a state uh, not only with air force, navy and military, but also with policing, courts, agriculture, schools, hospitals, <laughs> uh, theater, art. It was a, a state within a state. It was built by the power of the people, really. In the past, in the past, in the past, in the Sri Lankako gobernua bake prozesu batean kokatutako negoziazioari ekin zion. Prozesuak ordea ez zuen luze iraun, eta jude salatzen duen moduan nazioarteko komunitateak jokaturiko rolak zeresan handia izan zuen horretan. Each time uh, that the governments uh, had uh, started talks with the Tamil parties, there were uh, singular rightist groups who were opposing any kind of agreement. 2001, 
December, the LTT declared ceasefire agreement and a new government had been formed and they agreed to talk totally as a result of balance of power between the two parties, not because of international pressure. Washington intervened and said that one of these should be held in Washington. And what happened? One party cannot go to Washington. The Tigers are a banned organization in the United States. And that was the first international violation of the ceasefire agreement. In 2006, the Tamil Tigers were banned as a terrorist organization by the EU. So you can see a conspiracy. So Sri Lankan conflict uh, is not only an internal conflict, it is also a geopolitical conflict. As you know, there is a huge tension between China and United States. Western imperialist forces need a strong state so that you know they could secure power in the Indian Ocean. Limia ta bederatziko maiatzaren emezortzian, Tamil Tigreek armak utzi zituzten eta gobernuak garaipen militarra aldarrikatu zuen. Irurun mila bat lagunek errefusiatu guneetan babestu behar izan zuten. Gobernuak preso eduki zituen eta egun, Human Rights Watch erakundeak salatu duenez, Sri Lankako gobernuak pertsona horietatik amaika mila guantanamoren antzeko limbo legal batean dauzka atxiloturik. Seireun bat ume barne. All of them were treated as criminals. They were kept in detention camps, no media was allowed, no NGO was allowed, no humanitarian agency was allowed. After few months, that is in December, the government announced that there are 12,235 tiger suspects in their custody. Up until today, even after two years, nobody knows where they are and who they are and nobody knows what happened to the others and on the other hand the whole of Tamil region that is the north and east of Sri Lanka which is traditionally the Tamil region like the Basque country uh, it is heavily militarized people who were initially held in detention camps uh, were released to go to the villages but these villages have got new military camps and the people do not have freedom to leave as they want. So in that sense the whole of north and east of Sri Lanka is an open prison where every Tamil has to take a permission if they want to leave that area. Even to go from one village to the other. The fishermen cannot go to fishing. They have to at least take the approval or permission from 10 government officers. And farming is not possible because there are at least 1.2 million landmines in the Tamil areas, mostly mined by the Sri Lankan military during 30 years of war. The military also has built new shops in the areas and they have built Buddhist temples. Uh, they have changed the name boards of the areas and uh, they have decorated the areas with the singular Buddhist cultural uh, things. So in that sense it's a total colonization. Gatazka politikoari, justizian onarrituriko irtemede bat emateko, egungo egoera zaila dirudien arren, itxaropena eta milen zein sinalarren belaunaldi berrietan dagoela uste du judek. We are not really optimistic. Now, internationally, uh, there is a quite an awareness about what happened in Sri Lanka. Uh, but within Sri Lanka, uh, there is a, a heavy militarization and repression not only in the Tamil areas, uh, but even in the single areas, uh, the government cannot be criticized. The project of Tamil Lilam has been ratified, confirmed by the so-called Western liberal democratic means through elections. <laughs> and it is this democratic voice, democratic consent 
that has been destroyed. So the whole issue is at the moment an issue of democracy. It is very clear that the government is scared, not about the Tamil Tigers now. They are scared of the Tamil people. Now, there are university students who are, uh, who are against the government in the Tamil region. I'll give one example. Now, today is the 18th of May. Uh, now, no, nobody is allowed to remember the dead. If you light a candle, if you light a lamp, or if you, uh, if you put a flag, if you go to a church to remember the people who were killed, you can be arrested. But uh, yesterday, the university students in the Tamil regions resisted. They gathered in hundreds uh, to, to remember the dead. People's resistance uh, is, is growing. I think the Sinhalese also will have to respond to it, which will, which will help uh, to broaden the democratic space. Uh, and that is the, the main thing that we have to do now then we can really, you know, uh, move forward a, a, a political solution.